Um, I will talk today about the uh, marine TV uh, observability. And uh, before that, the guy was talking about how this day should be called. Uh, I think the day today should be called the Polyndrome Day. So we can call it Polyndrome Marine TV Day because you know you can see this digits on top, forward and backwards, they uh, hit uh, the same, right? Which is a very uh, unique event, I think, especially in. Uh, uh, in uh, this kind of full, uh, full form. Okay, so uh, uh, why are we talking about the uh, observability today, right? If you look at uh, running the database systems interaction, you uh, of course have uh, a lot of uh, complicated problems. Many of them are not easily repeatable, right? In my experience, if you have a bug, you can say, hey, you know what, the development team can easily uh, repeat it, and that is probably, you know, up there or more fixing that down, right? Especially if you look at some more complicated things, you know, contentions, things which happen in the distributed system and so on and so forth, right? And um, uh, really uh, to troubleshoot those things, uh, efficiency bugs, performance problems and what's not, you uh, really need to have the uh, insights in terms of what is going on in the system, and that is uh, what uh, observability is, uh, is all about. Now, when I look about the durability, I kind of look about the two, uh, two approaches, right? Two things you need to do. One is something what we are having ongoing data capture as a monitor, right? We capture the data all the time, day in, day out, and we store it somewhere that, that is uh, used for monitoring. The thing in this case is, of course, where uh, overhead of that activity should be uh, related to low, right? The other is when we do some of the more temporary data capture, capture, which we do for the bike. Let's say you have something which is going wrong, right? You connect to the system, uh, start to debug it. In this case, often we can deal with high data volumes, uh, more overhead, uh, and so on and so forth, right? If that helps us to uh, troubleshoot the problem. Now, uh, what I think is interesting in this case is also if I look at the database system, right, as my ID, you can't really just look at the uh, MariaDB alone, especially when it comes to the uh, performance problems, right? Because uh, operating system problems, uh, hardware can be often the uh, root cause. Uh, application issues, what application is doing, also cannot be ignored. In very many cases, uh, we hear from uh, users, they say, oh, you know what? Uh, everything is the same as it was yesterday, by now it uh, drops up. Yeah, and when you take a look at that, actually somebody pushed a new code, right, or, you know, uh, something else happened, your application behavior drastically changes and they blame the database. Well, because guess what? That's what developers do, right? Uh, and uh, also there uh, are some other big, uh, important uh, concepts, especially if you work in an increasingly popular virtualized and cloud environments, right? Uh, you know, noisy neighbors, some have a background load because you cannot really, in this case, focus only what's going on on your system, on your OS image, but you have to uh, look at those other things as well. Okay, uh, with that little in a preview, let's look at uh, specifically what MariaDB has to offer in terms of uh, uh, observability, right? Uh, and uh, as I have a relatively short slot, I will. Now, uh, only cover most important things and relatively high level of uh, details. So, as of MariaDB 10.4, I think these are uh, the main key data sources, right? If you are uh, looking to build an observability system, try to evaluate an observability system, which you can use uh, when it comes to, uh, to MariaDB. Show status or show uh, local status. That is something which is like existed forever. Right? Uh, I don't remember any version of my school that didn't have uh, a, show, uh, a show status. Uh, right? uh, uh, it has in MariaDB uh, more than uh, uh, 500 variables, so there's a lot of information available out there. Most of them are counters, some of them are kind of gadgets, if, you know, uh, show a current budget, right? With threads running. Uh, and some of it may contain some, you know, text, uh, the text information. 
Uh, also, this shows that that they have a session and a global scope, right? So you can uh, take a look at a value which is global for a session itself, or you can uh, uh, for the whole server, or you can take a look at what the values are for your current uh, service. What is also interesting is what this data is also available as an uh, uh, information, uh, the information schema table, right? If you prefer to use SQL syntax and select rather than show syntax. Okay. Oh, uh, something I think it's interesting to point out uh, here is what uh, uh, in uh, uh, in MariaDB it's available in uh, information schema, and this is different than MySQL, which moved those tables to performance schema, right? You, uh, uh, you know, a, a little bit ago. So here is how it works, right? If you use an SQL syntax, for example, right, we can uh, get the number of questions, right, which is our queries by system handle. We can see that globally there was a lot of queries, right? Obviously, if I look at the session status, that is how many queries my session did, that is uh, a lot local. Now, I think what is interesting in this case is uh, to note what uh, not, all their, uh, not all variables are really truly session variables, right? So specifically, uh, if you look at the rows information, Right, you query session variables, the data is presented, but that is actually the global values, that is not the local values per session. Right? So there is a little bit of a disconnect, right? and there is uh, no easy uh, way I know right, to detect which is truly session variables which have displayed a session. And that is kind of a hard problem because that sort of came from you know, my school behavior from ages and ages ago, right? which was uh, never on. Uh, if you are looking to get something like the stats like uh, output, uh, you can uh, you can use uh, uh, MariaDB admin or MySQL uh, admin right to get uh, uh, get such output. Uh, if you look here, the uh, what happens here? Yeah, the first value. Uh, this is uh, so from a start of the system, and then these uh, this kind of correspond to an increment, right? So in this case, it corresponds to just uh, one, uh, uh, one second. Okay, moving on to information schema. In an information schema uh, for Marie Duvier, there are more than uh, 70 tables. Many of them are, um, contain information about the schema and other uh, data objects which exist in MySQL. There are others which are information related. Right. This is, for example, what you can see about their uh, table information. Right. There are a lot of helpful data to uh, understand, you know, uh, space usage by uh, different uh, different storage engine, right, and uh, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. Right. Uh, and there are also data such as uh, in the TV matrix, which uh, contains the uh, the performance uh, data. Now, if you look at the inner metrics, and if you look uh, at the uh, observability for inner DB storage engine in particular, it contains a lot of uh, very, mm, very interesting data, right? especially helpful to troubleshoot some complicated problems. Right? And it looks very similar in, uh, uh, to, come, uh, to show status, but the important difference is uh, what many of the uh, variables are not enabled by all. Right, so, uh, yeah, you got a question? Performance impact to enable by default? Yeah, that is a, that is a good, uh, uh, good question. Actually, uh, it is very low, right? I mean, uh, I have been enabled by default. It uh, you know, doesn't seem to uh, have you know, fractional percent, right, uh, overhead. So it's not like performance schema where uh, the overhead can be quite low. So why not enable it by default for you to see? Well, I'd say, well, I'm just saying it's uh, how it is, right? I think some of that is also, <laughs> in many cases, MySQL and MariaDB both provide so much information by default for, the, for conventional user, it is kind of too much, <laughs> right? And in this case, you uh, don't yeah. enable by default what most users will do. They are there, they are just set by to zero, so. But yeah. well, anyway, so if you want this data, you'll have to, uh, you'll have to enable. Uh, enable it, right? And I think it's interesting also in this case, it has uh, 
some other interesting things, right? You can see it, it stores a mix and max value, right? And some, uh, some others. Oh, look at that. It looks like some more food came in. It's better than this. Hey, David. Okay. Um, another you know, thing which exists in uh, in uh, in MariaDB uh, in the information schema is this uh, uh, in a DMVDS table, right? Which is uh, which is pretty cool because uh, while you can enable uh, to get the mutex information in uh, information schema or in performance schema, it has a very high overhead. You can also get some status from show identity status, but that is not parsable. Right, so I really, uh, uh, really like uh, uh, that what this is accessible right uh, through select in uh, MariaDB. It's not accessible in MySQL. Uh, what is interesting in this case, and what was so surprising in MariaDB four, was the name is empty. I was surprised because uh, the documentation it actually shows this table with a name in it, which is uh, which is uh, you know. And which is actually cool, right? Because this, uh, uh, if you look at the create file and create line, obviously these are not stable, right? Between the minor version, they can uh, they can change if the code was changed. While the variable names, if it's defined, it is much more stable. Uh, also, um, MariaDB has an extended process list, which is available in the uh, information schema table. And I think what is very cool and uh, uh, practical, I think in the process list, what you can see the progress report here, you can also see amount of memory and max memory used, which is often very, very helpful, right? Often you can see some very frightening folks asking, hey, okay, you know, what the hell is using a lot of memory? Uh, you can see that uh, very easily and simply in uh, by the user. Moving on to performance schema. Performance schema contains uh, some of the most advanced instrumentation available. It has more than uh, 50 tables, uh, but uh, I think to you know it is disabled uh, by default in MariaDB 10.4. Uh, and uh, to enable that, you need to restart the server. So that's not something you uh, it enable uh, online. Uh, depending on how you enable performance schema, the overhead can be uh, going quite high. Right? You can, you know, typical configuration. You know, the 3%, but you can get 10% or more depending on what you enable um, and uh, 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 and how you, uh, you, you configure it. So, if you look at performance schema configuration, it is, I think, very uh, distinct from many other uh, items in MySQL, right? How you configure it's done through uh, performance schema tables, right? So, it can be done at runtime with uh, SQL. Then we also can do that through the configuration settings. So that actors tells us uh, what kind of users are going to be uh, monitored, right? Then uh, you can set up consumers, which tell us about what kind of summaries are going to be built, right? And these are the default settings. And then you also go, can go and enable and disable specific instrumentation points in the code. So MariaDB contains more than 700 uh, instrumentation point and more than 250 of them are enabled, right? So that means is about one third of instrumentation points are enabled by default, the rest are disabled, probably because of the uh, high overhead enable them calls, right, compared to the value they, uh, that they provide. Uh, and I think, I think, um, yeah. the configuration is that you can also configure what uh, object you want to instrument, right? So. Uh, if you can see the default, in uh, case it's enabled, we do not instrument uh, MySQL performance schema uh, right, and, and uh, the information schema uh, in this uh, in the set. So here is an example of what performance schema can provide, right? And you can see there is a lot of information, right, which is uh, shows us about the current state and time. Uh, you can see a lot of this information is not super user friendly, right? You can see that timer start, timer end, those things are kind of measured in picoseconds. You know, anybody knows how many zeros, right? But how much you kind of divide, uh, uh, right? Uh, <laughs> to get your uh, visual seconds. Uh, yeah. What's that? Uh, 
web servers. Uh, yes, yes, there is always one smart one in the room. But anyway, yeah, I mean, that is kind of a uh, 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 part, right? And um, in my in my SQL, there is a um, C schema included to convert those for human readable values. Uh, MariaDB currently uh, does not uh, does not uh, include. Uh, right. Uh, here's another example uh, which uh, shows uh, one of the summary in, in this case for file IOSUM. Right. You can see for uh, what for in a TV data file here. Right. You can see there is the num number of IOS. Uh, right. Number of uh, reads. Uh, number of writes. Number of other stuff which corresponds to misc really corresponds to FSync. Right. And the time which it took uh, to serve uh, those requests. Which is again, if you can convert them from giga seconds, well, actually is quite uh, uh, quite interesting uh, information. Okay, uh, logs. Obviously, logs are also very um, uh, valuable information, for which uh, you can get with MariaDB. You can have error log, general query log, uh, slow query, uh, slow query log. I will, uh, for the sake of time, focus on the slow query log uh, here to show what. Uh, MariaDB uh, has to offer, right? This is how the default MariaDB slow query log looks like, uh, right? You can see that it is query information and get as well as some uh, execution statistics uh, available here. One of the very cool features that uh, what uh, MariaDB has, which uh, um, MySQL, for example, doesn't, is you can also enable the explain class to be stored uh, in the uh, in the slow query log, which is especially helpful. If you use slow query log for all the queries, right? You set the long query time to some high value, and then if the query goes slow, you can see explain file, right query, and explain log why it was slow. Why is that important? Because uh, sometimes the execution plans would not be uh, would not be stable, right? There may be something weird with that particular query execution, and if you run the query again from command line, you might not get the same line. Yeah, I think you have a question. Maybe I did not listen well. Is it enabled by default? No, that's not enabled by default, right? Where you, uh, you, you, uh, you press uh, slow query log settings where you can okay. configure to write it. So this is kind of how the default looks, yeah. and then you can add the uh, explain. Yeah, Monty, did you want to buy it? Uh, you guys said we have lots of options. You have to take something from a point of server. Like you can configure, uh, for example, if running a sort of zero, you can either have a sort of zero as a when you need whatever row that is separated. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of stuff. Again, for sake of time, 20 minutes, I, I thought I would uh, focus on something which you know, many of you may not know about, or I will find especially, especially interesting. Okay. Um, no, no, it's going to wrong direction. So, uh, the next thing uh, I will cover is uh, explain. That is, uh, and I think mean, obviously any uh, yeah, DBA or developer uh, should know. Well, most developers don't, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you look at the uh, grand scheme of things, right? Uh, which is really, um, really cool to understand uh, why the queries are uh, running uh, slow, right? Uh, here is some, you know, simple or an explain example, right? For uh, for uh, MariaDB, and there are some advanced uh, cool features uh, MariaDB has. Uh, you can use explain uh, with format equals JSON, which gives you information in JSON format with more data, and I think it's kind of more machine parsable, right? So if you want to run some script to say, hey, you know, I want to parse explain for my queries, and there's like some things I don't like, then explain format equals JSON is absolutely fantastic. Um, you also have a show, show explain for connection ID, right? That is fantastic for the queries which are um, which are currently running, right? If you have a query which is running for three hours and say, what the hell is going on, right? Of course, you can just kill it, but you probably want to understand why this particular instance of query is running slow before you, you, you kill it. Uh, and that is a fantastic way to do it. There is also an analyze statement in uh, MariaDB, which is also was known as explain uh, analyze in some early versions, which allow us to 
actually run the query and, uh, and see how an actual execution compares to what explain shows, right? This is how uh, it looks with this query. And you can see uh, what explain is estimated for first table where we this kind of number of rows, that is actual number of rows, right? This was kind of estimated, again, column matches from, uh, and that was, in this case, it's even 100% match. And you can see for a second table, uh, rows number estimated was this number, right? And, and this was the number of rows which was actually found in the process, right? You can see, in this case, the numbers are, you know, pretty close, right? In some cases, in different queries, you may have uh, uh, your explain in, uh, results and kind of an actual execution maybe well off, and that's kind of signaling, for example, hey, you know what, I need to update my stats, right? Or maybe there's something else, <laughs> which is different. Uh, which is different. Well, uh, and uh, uh, let me end that, uh, uh, this uh, presentation with a uh, uh, shameless plug. So if you guys are looking for some uh, observability solution for databases, the open source one, we have uh, a have a tool which uh, is uh, um, called Reform Monitor Management. <laughs> I think most of you <laughs> know already, uh, which uh, has a special focus of really helping to uh, aggregate and analyze queries from a uh, large number of servers over, you know, over a period of time. So if you haven't, check it out. You may like it. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you.